Hi all, let's look at game four of the Alpha Zero against Stockfish uh, match. So this is one of the 10 key games outlined in the recent research paper. So game four, quite involved game this one. Alpha Zero playing white. D4, Knight F6, C4. We go into the Queen's engine defense. So pretty standard stuff here. Bishop B4 check, Bishop D2. Most uh, people in chess based live but play a5 here. Bishop takes d2 might be giving white a smaller edge out of the opening. Queen takes d5. Black's position now is fairly solid at this point. We see c takes d5. And we'll see a lot of pressure later on the d5 pawn because black actually takes e takes d5 here. Taking with a piece might run into e4 at some point. So taking with the pawn seems entirely logical to keep a lock and key on central squares. But it is a potential long term target. Knight c3, that d5 pawn is going to be pressurized soon. An interesting decision here already is played b4. So in one respect, it would seem to be discouraging c5, but in another, the possibility of playing later b5 under the right circumstances might also be useful for that c6 square and to outline the light square weaknesses. We see black actually reacting immediately with c6. And then we see queen b2. This looks like quite a nifty queen move, uh, being able to add more support potentially for b5 at some point. We see a5. Now pawns don't go backwards, so all of these pawn moves uh, basically, in terms of chess engines, they really need perhaps a long time to sometimes reject the pawn move because it could be outside of their horizon. And I'm mentioning this now because some of the pawn moves later might be a little bit suspect. But at one minute per move, the stockfish author also says that, you know, sometimes it's not really optimized for one minute per move it's optimized for a real game where it could allocate time to critical positions and maybe you know some of these pull moves might be influenced by that one minute a move window so i think to be fair it, it should be said that uh, stockfish might not be running under great great conditions but you'll see that from a later pull move in particular not this one in particular but now b5 c5 we see rook a c1, queen e7, knight a4, so putting pressure on that queen side. This seems like a very nice play. The queen does seem useful potentially on that diagonal and holding the center. Rook a b8, rook f d1, c4. So we see now after c4, this pawn has lost support from its fellow pawns on both sides. So can white put a bit of pressure on d5? We see knight e5, and that justifies the earlier queen b2. You see that the queen b2 is supporting this. This is quite a nice aggressive knight. Queen e6. So it seems already black's back looks a bit passive. f4, reinforcing that knight. Now queen d2, queen comes back. Knight f8. Knight c3, you can see a lot of pressure on d5 building up potentially. Rook f1, now queen d6. a4, rook c8, e3, knight e7. And now aggression on the king side, g4, knight e8, f5. So white is gaining a space advantage. f6, knight f3. This wedge pawn structure is interesting. Queen d7, queen f2, knight d6. But black is trying to use its assets, that lock on the e4 square. Knight f d2, rook f8, queen g3. Some shuffling here. Now I want to get to a, a more critical position. After queen d6, well we, we are seeing some interesting stuff now after queen d6. Actually, this queen is protected. Uh, if, yeah, if taking that would seem, you know, black would be quite stable. After knight f1, it could be possible that black is stable here. For my analysis, even if queen takes g3 was played, 
in the game queen a3 was played but let's have a quick look at queen takes g3 it seems here if black doesn't do anything it's going to be less of a downside basically uh, but we see in the game continuation now after queen a3 rook c2 h5 so black uh, starts to move this h pawn and this is my earlier comments this one minute move uh, you know maybe this this wasn't necessary uh, this particular pawn move and it might be compounded a bit by another pawn move later for a moment let's have a look if this pawn isn't touched say Queen d6 and let's just have the Queens coming off it looks for my analysis I mean I'm not entirely sure what White's plan is the reason I think it's kind of stable is that any g5 later this pawn is going to be weak uh, this pawn is technically a backward pawn so black hasn't really committed it seems any major sins to be totally punished for in this kind of scenario and you know I just checked to see is there any plan for white not not really I couldn't see any evident plan but in the game continuation we see something far more committal from black coming up okay so h5 in itself might not be a total uh, disaster yet Queen c7 uh, G takes h5 would justify black a bit because it's weakening that f5 so you know Bishop c8 and this is weakening you can see that black can really intensify on f5 and uh, we can get a position which is about even like this uh, technically so we see actually uh, this infiltration instead Queen c7 this interesting infiltration hitting b7 and b6 and black offers uh, the exchange of Queens now I think the Queen just gets trapped actually <laughs> if Queen takes b7 uh, it looks as though the Queen's just getting trapped so that's obviously that's to be avoided uh, now this exchange of Queens this position here after knight g3 this is this is I'm questioning now the one minute and move because actually it seems h takes g4 doesn't seem again as if blacks committed any major sins to be majorly punished for uh, but in the game we see h4 and I consider in just intuitively from my intuition that you know pawns don't go backwards this is a fundamental and obvious thing to say in chess all the other pieces are, have flexibility the only piece without flexibility if you consider pawns pieces is, is the pawns so this pawn move decision needs to be uh, you know very much in depth uh, consideration very in depth consideration because it represents something quite committal where the cost of which cannot be retracted uh, basically the downside might not be retractable it might be a fixed target for later if we look at h takes g4 here this position again I'm looking in terms of what I would call stability if the evaluation is going to change that much I think there'll be some shuffling around maybe and maybe it would just be another draw this this game a lot of the games in the match were drawn so I, I think this this might be a candidate for a, a potentially drawn game later if this had happened but we see this this move instead this as I say potentially losing liability h4 Uh, which might be something prompted because of the one minute per move uh, rule so knight h5 the knight can actually reroute from h5 to f4 to g2 later and we'll see that soon some shuffling around now h3 is protected which means the bishop can move without dropping h3 which means the knight can come back to g2 which means h4 is under great scrutiny and that links to the idea that pawns do not go backwards they're the only piece without that fundamental flexibility so in terms of engines and and calculation you really need sometimes more than a minute move before any pawn moves in particular because they're all kind of you know like we call critical positions they're kind of critical moves you can't really retract any pawn moves so black's play, paying a price now this is a a sin <laughs> inverted commas a sin that's been made this this pawn weak and it's been taken off here it's becoming a gambit now black's basically forced to play this as some sort of weird gambit so going a pawn down 
Uh, and okay, it looks as though the king is on a dangerous fall, though. So, but isn't this just potentially an elaborate consoli consolidation now? As long as the king's not in major trouble, knight f3. So if knight takes, we can just play knight takes, knight check, and then yeah, we're winning that piece. So that pawn's not going anywhere. Knight takes here, creating a small change in pawn structure. Some pressure on g5, that's protected. Rook g3. Yeah, and it seems white's, you know, a clear pawn here. Uh, but he has, he, <laughs> Alpha Zero has got this, this backward pawn uh, liability, which sometimes, you know, might make a game very difficult to, to win, even a pawn up here. So Bishop f3, though it is played. Rook d8. Yeah, you don't really want to go into a, a self pin like this. So rook d8, bishop e2. Um, black's waiting for a moment, really. So shuffling around. But now h4, and um, black really can't take this because this is very good check for white, this position here. Uh, on king takes, we, we've got horrible things like bishop e4, <laughs> double check, and mate protecting everything, and the king's mated, it seems. So king f7, bishop h5. So yeah, rook takes b6 check. And yeah, white has now damaged the pawn chain over here. So this one is a potentially weak liability later in the end games. So yeah. White's well, still doing very well here, and is a pawn up. Uh, sorry, let, let me just go back here. After h4, yeah, let's go back to the game continuation. That was on, on g takes h4. Rook h8 was played, and we see h5. It's still a pawn up for white. Some shuffling around. h6, though. Rook h3. And it looks as though you might think this pawn's weak, isn't it? It's only protected by the rook. And we see rook h7 as though black could double. But we see now king g1. And here bishop a8 is played. Uh, yeah, I mean... It's an interesting position, and it's here after knight d1 that this pawn is actually indirectly defended anyway. Uh, you might ask if the rooks double immediately, and that's that's interesting as well to consider if the rooks doubled immediately on that. Perhaps something like e4 is is quite dangerous. Yeah, so maybe that's why that bishop was was put on a8. Because e4 here looks pretty dangerous. It would gain uh, potentially a valuable tempo on d takes, bishop takes, that's hitting the bishop. So we see this move bishop a8 instead of just doubling. Knight d1 indirectly defends that pawn now because after, if black had played rook h8, then there's knight f2 with knight g4 check coming in. Uh, so that's pretty nasty. And this is just looks suicidal. Uh, with that check there or yeah it looks yeah wrong to go into a self pin so we see g4 actually rook h5 g3 yeah these pawns do not go backwards so knight c3 knight g8 knight e2 attacking this pawn now swapping it for h6 and we still see white is clearly doing well here a pawn up and this king f2 implies that this could be an infiltration road for this rook so we have some simplification in fact now rook h1 and this marks still a, a positional plus a big positional plus now and this is looks like a desperate pawn move now c3 we have rook c1 rook h8 just giving up c3 for f5, but b6 and d5 remain weak in this end game. And look at white's piece superiority here. The bishop's much more superior than that bishop, and the rook's got these pawns to attack. So this represents much more fun for white than black, this position. 
yeah rook h h6 check uh, now is on a possibility some shuffling around check and now taking this it's just a winning end game now it's just a matter of technique really nothing too spectacular here it's just it just seems like a technique exercise so yeah the black pawns dropping off black could have resigned here basically uh, yeah I'm not entirely sure about how convincing white play whites play was myself in this game because of that h4 uh, issue I have with blacks play there are other super spectacular games though in the match but I I thought I should follow logically from the research paper so game four I hope you got something out of it anyway and it's fairly interesting in its own right uh, so it shows yeah I, I think we really need uh, to give alpha zero uh, the the current engines in the, in what they were designed for basically that's the engine authors really spoken out about that it was, really wasn't designed for one minute per move and maybe some of these moves like h1 in particular they represent sort of critical moves in inverted commas critical moves which would require sometimes more than one minute a move like maybe even 10 minutes but it will distribute its time across the total time available in normal conditions and also have greater hash tables so i'm not entirely convinced by this game myself from being you know from the point of view of being spectacular but other games i assure you are so anyway comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much